all right guys fulu coming to you with another video i hope all is well um you know it's crazy because you would think that this woman who is a former olympic athlete three-time olympian she did two olympics in track and field and she did another olympics in bobsledding you would actually think that, you know, with with that kind of status, that she would have her choice of men, that she would have a creme de la creme of men that will offer to be with her and, you know, fulfill that role that she wants to have. As I said before, you know, unlike Western standards, uh, It's, it's not that difficult to get married where I come from. And it doesn't take like months of dating to know that you want to marry someone. As a matter of fact, uh, it was quite, it, I mean, honestly, if I wanted to, as, as crazy as it sounds, when I visited my sister in Cuba, if I wanted to get married in Cuba, I could have got married in Cuba and the thing is, my wife, if I would have took a wife over there, she she would have said, you know, I'd rather you visit than me actually go live in the West with you. Because even they are hip to how it goes in the United States. By contrary to, uh, to popular belief, mainly the only ones who want to leave like these countries are the men because the men are going to be breadwinners. You know, the men are going to do the laborious work over here. You know, but the the fact of the matter is, is Lolo Jones is her name. She's 38 years old. She's a virgin, single and unmarried and thinking that Mr. Wright is just going to come. And sorry to say it, but Mr. Wright is is looking for someone maybe 10 years her her age 10 years younger than her he's not looking for 38 year old you know but let's let's go over let's go over this on my wedding day and he knows the cost he knows how much pain it was for me to wait that he would love me even more for the fact that i sacrificed for him and there's i was reading that's a problem right there because it's like no guy is going to really want to deal with her with the amount of baggage she's bringing in because I'm pretty sure that she had her choice of, of men and she probably dated men but she probably had these unrealistic expectations she probably was very combative because she already seems like she's combative right off the jump. And also, I, I believe that since she's making it known that she's single and, you know, looking for something serious, I'm pretty sure all types of dudes have dropped in her DMs to, like, you know, take her up on her offer. But... I'm under the impression that because of her, like, her attitude and her way of being that, you know, dealing, dealing with her, she, it, it, it would be, it would be more benef, it would be more like trials and tribulations than it would benefits, you know? I mean, besides her V car, what does she offer? Like, what, what is she gonna offer you? It seems like all she would wanna offer you is like pain and like difficulties by even how she's talking. This is a quote by Max Lucado and it says, you value something, especially the more you wait for it. The problem is like real niggas, they don't wait for things. Real niggas, we go and get the things. You know, of course, working towards the thing, we have to stay patient, we have to stay down. 
but we know it's not going to fall in our laps. We know we have to take some kind of action to get it. You know, like even when I test the waters just to see how easy it is to take a traditional wife, I I ask some of my friends all the time. Like I have a lot of friends in um, different parts of West Africa, some in East Africa. I say, so, okay, well, if I like go ahead and like save a couple of racks for this trip, you have a wife available? And they'll be like, yeah, sure, no problem. So there still has to be some kind of effort into getting what you're after. She expects Prince Charming to seek her out. And it's like, no disrespect to her, but it's 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 like you're kind of. When you were running, you should have been. Seeking out Prince Charming on the track. Usually, sometimes the track athletes are the best couples together. You know, now I don't recommend track and coach being uh, couples. I don't like that. That's not a good idea. But track athletes who are doing both events or doing two events. Yeah. Why not be couples? And. Why not get another athlete while you're at the Olympics? You know, it doesn't have to be a track athlete. It could have been like a boxer, maybe a uh, hmm, a wrestler. Uh, hmm, trying to think of the events, weightlifting, you know, uh, kai, uh, kayaking, just so many events. And you mean to tell me you couldn't find a man? So you think about the things you're willing to wait for to to achieve in life, whether it's an Olympic gold medal. If you're waiting, if you're willing to wait every four years for an Olympic gold medal, you're putting a lot of value on that. So imagine me when I meet my husband. OK, well, a little off topic. Um the truth of the matter is Lolo Jones was not really like all that when it came to running hurdles. Physically, she was strong, but technically she wasn't that good. As a matter of fact, um, some of my athletes that I actually work with, they smoke Lolo Jones at, uh, meets you know they were smoker like in the hurdles like i think if i'm not mistaken her only success was uh a indoor medal a indoor gold medal i don't think she's ever won a uh a like a big time medal let me check real quick uh let me let me um, Google it real quick. But I believe that's her only uh, victory. I believe so. I think she won. A, um, I think that's all she won. And now it's it turns out she's she's uh, thirty nine years old. So I don't know if she's gonna get married with that. You know, I I, I mean. And I'm making this video to show that it's not just the regular women complaining about where the all the good guys go, I can't find the man, you know, things like that. It's not just them. It's these celebrity women too. It's the it's the celebrity women too that that are having trouble. And you would think that they wouldn't have any trouble. You know, you would think it would be easy for them to, you know, find a find a, uh, um, a husband because they will have access to the creme de la creme of men. Let me see. Um, so. It looks like uh, the only. 
thing she won was on an international level was two gold medals in the World Indoor Championships in 2008 and 2010. But the way they were hyping her, you was, you would think that she was winning everything. You would think that she was just dominating, but it, it really wasn't like that. You know, it really, it really was not, that wasn't the case with her. Unfortunately, when she played the V-car role, I think that kind of raised her popularity as well when she shouldn't have even said anything about that. You know, that should have been something she kept to herself, but you know, I guess she wanted to bring attention to herself, you know, let's continue. You know, hopefully he sees that, like, I truly loved him before I met him to be able to refrain. So um, really just want to encourage a lot of the people who are single, who are lonely, who are frustrated to just continue to press on, not be discouraged and try to find hope and faith in the daily. Because I know that um, it gets hard out there and you get frustrated. So I guess I'll ask you a few questions before I leave. Not really. I mean, um, I'm I'm a single dude, and I know what I need to do. I don't have time to like be frustrated. I don't have time to think about loneliness. I don't got time. I don't really got time to do that. You know, what I mean, there's no reason to think like that when you have to do so many things anyway. When there's a lot of things on your plate. Um. I mean, you have to look at certain things as an opportunity, like opportunity to learn, opportunity to progress and learn, like just different skills. And with boxing, this is like a 25-8 type thing. You know, even when you're at home, you're doing something towards boxing or, you know, whether it be like eating the right foods or whether it be doing different technical things. So you're not really thinking about, oh, I'm single. You know, when you're doing something towards a business, you're not thinking about, oh, I'm single. You know, I just ordered uh, Rick Ross's new book. Well, actually, it was sent to me, you know, by one of his, uh, I want to say one of his uh, uh, cohorts in L.A. that I ran into. Uh, sent me the new Rick Ross book. Shout out to Rick Rose. And that's another project to extract information from that book to make something happen. So it, it, it with her, it's like she wants a pity party for choices that she made. I'm pretty, as I said before, I'm pretty sure the the majority of men were available to her but she just set these unrealistic expectations for them and they were probably put off by that, you know? Eve, um, what do I look forward to most this year? Um, I think basically the main thing I'm looking forward to this year is just answers because I have been in a season where I've been praying to God for him to just open doors or close them. I don't care if he closes the door. I just need answers. I feel like I've been praying for track and field. And I, there was one year I walked away from track and field. I was like, you know what, God, I don't think you want me to run anymore. And so I called up my agent and I said, okay, I'm done with track. And my agent called up every TV network. Like ESPN had offered me a job in the past, um, NBC. And he called up all those people and one by one, they were all like, oh, sorry, that job is filled. We no longer have that job. We love Lolo, but the job is no longer. Well, when you look at this, uh, a lot of times what these uh, single women do who have hit the wall is they bring God into everything like that. They bring God. They say, God does this. God does that. God has done this for me. God has did this. Uh, blase, blase. I'll give you a perfect example. I'm not going to say her name, but there's a single woman who's 
like uh I think like in in, the, in her forties, I believe. I believe yeah, she's in her forties. But she brings God into every single situation. She talks about how she's a servant of God and how it's a, that he has put mercy upon her and just all types of things. And that's what they do. It's almost like a holier than thou type thing. Um, in my school of spiritual thought, um, the reality is, is you, you keep, you keep your piety quiet. You know, you keep your personal piety. You, you don't let people know that you're a pious individual. You don't let people know these things. It's better to be quiet about your piety. But, um, you know, with these like single women, that's the first thing they do is uh, they talk about, you know, God. But let's let's continue available and so i was like what like you guys just wanted me to work for you and now it's gone and then lo and behold god uh opened up a sponsorship and i was able to continue to be an athlete so i was like okay so god wants me to be an athlete well then you fast forward and i just got dead last in my first race so i was like okay god i'm a bit confused because you close the doors on the tv but then you open the doors for being an athlete but then i get hurt and i'm dead last like what do you well, from being an athlete, I understand that if you want if you want to get anything big, you're gonna have the setbacks. You're gonna have those kind of things, and so sometimes God will test you on how much you want a thing, and sometimes God will test how stoic you are when the thing doesn't go your way quite your way you know um there are going to be setbacks and stuff like that but it's it may be a test on how much you want it um i'll give a perfect example i'm not saying this is the best example but when you look at rappers like jay-z uh when you look at rappers like uh who else can I do? Little Dirt, Polo G, uh, 21 Savage. Their, their setbacks made the stories, you know, um, Nipsey Hussle as well. Their setbacks is what made them who they are. Their setbacks gave them the fuel for the music they provide, you know. So this set these setbacks are part of the bigger picture. So she I think she was under the impression that okay, boom, I can have it my way and just come out and dominate. And it doesn't work like that most of the time. What me to do here? So I think what I'm most looking forward to is whatever season God's, God wants me in, just knowing with clarity, that's where he wants me at. And I also am looking forward to like just a new season of not being single. I'm not going to lie. Like I'm so tired of going on these bad dates. I'm so tired of getting to know another guy after another guy. And it's just not working out. I'm over it. Like I'm the thing is, is that like, um, she says all of these things, but I'm pretty sure the guys that she went out with, I'm pretty sure like there had to be at least one that met most of the criteria that she was looking for. But again, I think it's the fact that she wants someone who is 007, uh, chiseled, and actually makes more money than her. I think she wants like a, a, a tycoon, like like a guy who's like a, 
yeah, like a ty- like a tycoon type, like probably a guy who has various estates, maybe a CEO of a Fort- Fortune 500 company, or maybe a guy who has his own company, like uh, Amazon type Jeff Bezos type guy, and the and I guess sh- she's just fishing fishing like these guys out and finding out that those that those guys are not available to her you know and it is it's making her upset and while she's upset um she's aging because she's 39 years old over the dating scene so i can't predict the future but i really am looking forward to the moment where i'm with my husband and i can look just like this and we're just watching reality tv shows or sports and that's the night so well that time has passed for you you should have been thinking about that when you were like in your 20s and things like that when you were just starting your olympic career your your professional running career. I'll give you an example. Uh, Sydney McLaughlin, who is a new track and field athlete, I think she is maybe twenty or something like that. She she's engaged to get married. Um. So her gold medal and and she's a gold medalist by the way and a world championship winner as well in the 400 hurdles so with that being said that didn't keep her her athletic endeavors didn't keep her from actually a guy shooting his shot and that guy her her deciding to build with that guy you know uh so with that being said it's like okay well you, I mean sorry to say it but it's it's already too late I I mean the only guy I can think of is maybe a beta male simp type dude Oh that's my ultimate goal uh, trying to see some of these other questions. Um, do, do, do. This one I get a lot, actually. Do I want my uh, future husband to be a virgin? I don't ju- like. I don't. He doesn't have to be a, a virgin, but he definitely has to be uh, celibate or not practicing having sex. Like that's. I mean, at this point in life, I'm not going to be dating a guy that doesn't believe it like if he believes it's okay to to have sex have premarital sex like that's just not a good fit for me because so i mean (sighs) you want that from a guy but the majority of women don't think like that the majority of women are not doing are, are not doing what you're telling him that he should do the majority of Western women ride cock carousels nonstop. Um, I mean, they even ride cock carousels when they're married. So you're asking him to not do that. But the majority of, of women are not doing that. Or the majority of women are doing that. The majority of women are having premarital sex. The majority of women are promiscuous in the West. The majority of women have a rap sheet in the West. So it's like, it's kind of not fair for you to be asking him to to not do that when your counterparts are doing that. So, I, I mean, I don't know, man. I have obviously waited and I don't believe, I I believe that having premarital sex, there's tons of consequences to it. You know, and a lot of people don't think there are consequences to premarital sex. There's actually consequences to just even cohabiting, living with someone before marriage. 
uh, actually increases your chance of divorce by 50%. And that's just living with someone of the opposite sex. So can you imagine the emotional ties of having sex with someone uh, that you're not going to marry? It's like you carry... Now, this goes and proves the point. And I'm sorry it's going to be a harsh reality for women. But for guys, a nut is just a nut. You know, like a guy... A, put it this way like i literally can go like blow a woman's back out and go get to the money like five minutes later like i can go do that and i, I wouldn't think no second i wouldn't think no second thought about doing that you know what i mean like it's easy like it, and i'm not trying to sound like a jerk but it is pretty easy for a guy to do that like a guy is like pro a, a guy is programmed differently than a woman. And the thing is, because of feminism and what have you, these women think they're programmed like guys, but the reality is they're not. The reality is um, with women, when they take on all these sexual partners, they take on um, a lot of emotional things. They take on like a lot. You know what I mean? And they try to act like that. Oh, it's no problem for me to sleep around and things like that. But it, it takes a toll on them. You know, so it's different for us. But I understand where she's coming from. You know what I mean? Because she's speaking from an emotional standpoint of view. And I do agree that for women, it does have there are consequences for sleeping around and things like that. Uh, emotional consequences whereas for men there are financial consequences for sleeping around and things like that and maybe health consequences as well all that baggage into your relationship so um i just would like him to be celibate and understand the consequences of that and i know it's hard for a lot of people who are having sex who believe that cohabiting doesn't really do anything because they don't get they they think it's coming off as judging well if you remove the faith base of this aspect at all there are scientific studies that show that cohabiting actually does increase your chance of divorce and there are there is a de detrimental impact to to all that so well the thing is is I see where she's coming from. I get it. But me personally, like I wouldn't even want a woman to live with me who's who's not my wife anyway. You know what I mean? I just I just really wouldn't want that to happen. You know, I wouldn't let a woman live with me who's not my wife. You know, the only re the only other woman I would let live with me is if she was related to me. And even then, she would be in a separate room and have a different living quarters to, to her own. You know, we, we would still talk and stuff like that. We would still conversate and whatnot, but she would still be doing her own thing. And if she needed my help in certain matters, then yeah, she gets my help. But I, I would never let a woman live with me, you know, who's not my... Um, my wife, you know, I, I'm not trying to be disrespectful or anything like that. And I've said this before and I'll say it again. But if I tell you all the emotions myself that I went through trying to do what I'm doing and trying to do more. Then you will understand why, like, I'm a very like to myself person off of this uh, app, you know, off of my platform. This platform is just to get the things off my chest that I see what's going on. You know what I mean? But it doesn't mean that I'm like goody goody and talking to a lot of people in person. Definitely not, you know, <laughs> definitely not that. So, um, a woman would be more prone to live with the man because then she gets to use his resources. I'm pretty sure the man is going out to pay the bills. I'm pretty sure the man is going out to 
put food on the table. I'm pretty sure the man is doing all of that. And she may just, unfortunately, there's been certain instances where a man is doing all of that, but she may be bringing another man to the house when you're not around, you know? So that's another reason why I wouldn't even go that route, you know? I don't know, like, even if you're not a faith-based person, uh, probably just consider the consequences of living with someone before marriage. So, but um, definitely don't want to be too preachy, but that's why um, I'm waiting. I'm waiting because my mom, she never got married. She never got married. She was with my dad for 20 years. They... They have basically what's a common law marriage. If you're with someone long enough, it's called a common law marriage. Um, and she had five kids, never married. And I think that was a part of the reason, but also my faith in God. And I just saw all the consequences of that, of her being with my dad for so long, them never actually getting married. And I know that there's a Christians out there that get... Well, I mean... I guess they weren't married by the Western standards, but I mean, if they were together for so long, I mean, it's like practically, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but it's, it's like practically they're married. If, if they were together for a long time, if they were together in the long run, if they were together through thick and thin, it's like practically a marriage thing. I think all they needed to do to solidify it was just go to the courthouse or and do that. But I mean, at the same time, it's like, I guess you can call it a marriage. I mean, they, I'm pretty sure they didn't separate. Uh, and, you know, if, if they didn't separate, then yeah. I mean, you can say that it's a marriage. You know, married and they still have divorce. Like, it's not a perfect world. It's not me saying that I'm waiting. It's not going to guarantee that I'm never going to get a divorce or I'm never going to have marital problems. But it definitely significantly increases my chance that my marriage will be successful. And with the divorce rate as it is, I want to try to do that as best as I can. So. I mean, that's the whole thing, though. I mean, th does she really believe that she's going to get married to the type of guy she's looking for? Because, as I said before, that six-figure, that 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 seven-digit dude that she wants, um, that dude's going to look young for younger women. He's not going to look for a 38-year-old. Um, I'll give you a perfect example. Idris Elba who's in his 40s his his wife i think is like uh in her late 20s you know what i mean so that's just another sign that older men gravitate towards younger women and there shouldn't be a issue in that but western society makes it an issue because the ones who make it the issue the most are the women because those same women are in competition with the younger women. So what they do is they say certain things, they try to put certain ideas into the younger woman's head, which will sabotage that younger woman's marriage prospects because they've already made the mistakes and there's no coming back from the mistakes that they made. You know, that's what happens. I just want my vir <laughs> virgin. I just want my husband to be on the same page as me. Like he doesn't have to be a virgin. I've talked to a ton of guys in the past that are not virgins. I've actually talked to guys who have kids, but they were faith based and they understood the consequences of basically what a lot of uh, churches are not really talking about nowadays. So that's honestly. She probably drug those dudes through the ground. She probably like. She probably like told them about like their mistakes and stuff like that. She probably like just scolded those dudes for having kids and things like that. And um, unfortunately, it's like uh, it's un it's unfortunate, but it's uh, it's the truth. 
she she probably scolded them, probably made them feel bad for having kids and whatnot. And I understand people need to have a faith and have some sort of belief and foundation, but let's let's just look at the history like um no disrespect to Christianity, but I mean kind of like Christianity was based off of um like I guess you can say Pauline Christianity was based off of like hedonism fetishes and the like thereof I mean look at did not Rome follow Christianity and we knew we knew what type of things they were doing in Rome right I mean of course the original message of Jesus upon him be peace was a pure message about social justice and about morality but that message has long gone disappeared um, I'll give you an example uh, one one minister uh, actually said this and I was shocked to hear this he said that you know because of Jesus upon him be peace didn't have a wife he was gay old to be left but that that moral message of Jesus is long gone. So if I were her, I would stop using the 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 church as a means of you know justifying her her current situation. My premise behind it, if that makes sense. So um, I'm trying to think, ooh, what other questions you guys have? A ton of questions. A lot of these guys, <laughs> a lot of them are like weird, weird stuff. So asking about candy corn and um, yeah, oh, this is more <laughs> just a, what's my biggest pet peeve that I have. I don't know if you're talking about for me or like the person I'm dating, but for me, the, big, the biggest, I'll say the biggest flaw I have is I'm very quick to get angry. I don't know if it's because I've never had a desk. I don't know if it's because I've never had a a real job in my life so I, I'm an athlete and I my job is based on emotion and performing and sometimes it's better for me to be angry and I perform better actually that's wrong all of the great performances of athletes were not based on anger all of the great performances by athletes were based on composure control and a undeniable work ethic that got you to that point. The emotions came out after the victory was complete, not before the victory was complete. When you're in the trenches and in the rain of fire, you keep your composure and you stay calm, cool and collected. That is probably why she didn't achieve what they expected her to achieve. That is why she's not an Olympic medalist and she's only a two time indoor medalist because she didn't compete with composure and she didn't compete with calm, cool and collective clear head nature. So Again, she's telling us that she's very combative. You know, that's another issue that she's she's letting us know that she's very combative. So a guy doesn't want that. A guy doesn't want a woman who's combative. A guy wants to be able to put his foot down knowing that his foot is go is for the betterment of the family at large and is for the betterment of people involved, both parties involved at large, without being without being um, questioned or anything like that. There's a difference between questioning someone, and there's a difference between suggesting something. Now, the suggestion 
could be taken into consideration. But if you just outright question someone and what they're doing and want to be combative about it, then what do we need? What are you really bringing to the table again besides the V card? <laughs> but I'm very quick to get angry and I wish I did not have that flaw. So um, just reading some of the comments that are coming through, would I date someone shorter? I have. A lot of people assume I only date athletes. That's not true. I actually went through a phase where I did not want to date an athlete at all because I felt like an athlete was too much fire with fire. So, um, but yeah, but since the Kevin Hart thing. You know, to be honest though, when you date an athlete with an uh, athlete, like I'm not gonna even cap, that leads to bomb sex. And that's part of a relationship, like, like what the hell? Like, why wouldn't you do that? I'm just, I'm just being honest, like, um, you're both fit, you're both in shape. Your bodies are right. It's gonna be some good fireworks, you know? Like, why wouldn't you want that? The fire can be balanced by, you know, um, different things but I guess I don't know man as happened I have gotten a ton of DMs some of them rude and then a lot of people just asking for like date re uh, requests which is not going to happen because I'm um, I don't even care if like uh, who's a good who's a really good looking celeb think of the most good looking guy celeb and if he slid into my DMs right now I most likely would not want to go on a date with him because I'm six months out from the Olympic trials, so I'm a bit stressed. So this woman has like just pretty much like just contradicted herself in this whole video. At first she says she's tired of being single, but now she's saying that even if the best looking celebrity slid in her DM, she probably would decline the request. Um, I mean, the one question I would ask her, like, if I, if I had, if I was in her face, I would just ask her, like, yo, what do you want? I'm not, not making any sense. Like, what, what, what is it that you want? You know? I, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> uh, someone just asked me in the comments what my favorite memory of Kobe is. I guess I only hung out with him twice, so I don't really have a favorite moment because they were both brief encounters. The first time I uh, met him was at the Olympic tri or the Olympics in London, and he was with all the Team USA basketball players, and they were just taking pictures with everybody. So I just took a picture with him before the opening ceremonies, before we walked out onto uh, the stadium for that lap. And then the second time I met him was at the Players' Tribune party, which was for the ESPYs. And he was much more relaxed then. It was like he had his guard down and was like super chill. Uh, but I think what I'm most impressed by Kobe is the fact that um, I know people look up to him for his accolades as an athlete, like amazing athlete. But I feel like his life was just starting because he was um, doing so much in the business area. He was directing films, he was writing books, and he was really helping women's sports in a lot of ways. I don't think a lot of people knew about that, but with his daughters, I think that that put a huge influence on him wanting to change women's sports. And he was a huge supporter of women's soccer, basketball, like, he just, I thought he was going to just really do some incredible things. And um, it's just a shame to see it cut short. Uh, so um, I think as an athlete, we live such strict lives. When we're training, when we're competing, we really don't get to be creative or start new endeavors. And since his retirement, he was exploding. He was doing so many things in so many different, different avenues. And I was just really excited as he was just starting all these new projects. And so for me, I was like, when I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, like, 
I just felt like, oh, it was just frustrating to see it cut short. Really frustrating. So, um, yeah. So that's about it, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining my live. Normally I'm more funny, but I guess with the heaviness of the last few days, it's just, it's not there tonight. <laughs> I'll come on another time and be more funny. Uh, apologies, but thank you so much for, I'm glad I was able to share why I'm waiting. And uh, thank you everybody who sent me a DM. I'll try to respond to as many as I can or write on your pictures and like your photos. I try to do that as often as I can. Um, I was going to post tonight, but like my heart's just too heavy. So um, I'll talk to you guys later, and I hope you guys have a very blessed week. So um, I'm just showing this video. The wall doesn't wait for nobody. Uh, the wall doesn't care if you're a professional athlete. The wall doesn't care if you're good looking. Uh, the wall doesn't care if you, you know, have a couple of accolades. It's, it's going to hit you. And, you know, it's hit Molo Jones. And I've made a video about this in the past, man. Um, I think, like, th there's, like, a couple of women who are celebrities who are in her situation. You have, like, Carrie Hilson. I think you have Melissa Ford. You have Holly Berry, you have Vita Guerra, I think you have Jennifer Aniston. You have different people who are celebrities who you would think will have the creme de la creme choice, but they don't. They 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 they're just not having it. You know, they just don't have the choices available. And so, um, with that being said, man, it it, I mean, Idris Elba just less let's say like it's his proof is in the pudding that it it gets better for us he came from bad relationships where he was not the one responsible for the bad relationship but lo and behold he's 40 something he got a younger woman it works opposite for women though and that's just the reality so with that being said, you know, um, I expect it to get worse, you know, especially in the society we're living in. I, th I think we're going to see more um, like of these celebrity women who may end up dying with dogs and cats, you know. But anyhow, that's all I got for now. Leave your thoughts, leave your comments. Fool is signing out. Jarrah.